Hello. Uh, I'll get started here. Um, so my name is David Greyer. I'm the product engineer for Hadoop at Object Rocket, which is a part of Rackspace. Uh, and Nico here is lead researcher at Barcelona Supercomputing. Today we'll be presenting uh, on a research study which identifies performance improvements on HBase configured to use bucket cache utilizing NVMe devices. Um, so our quick outline here, we will cover briefly who and what is Object Rocket, BSC, and Loja. I'll give a brief overview of the technologies regarding HBase and NVMe that pertain to this. Um, <clears throat> we will describe the cluster we use for disk configurations, along with some benchmarks we provide baseline for disk performance. Continuing on uh, to talk more in depth about HBase use case and some key benchmarks that identify these speedups, we utilize read-only workloads, which emulate warmed caching solutions. Um, secondly, a mixed workload, which show comparison with read-write deleting uh, type scenarios. And we will conclude with a summary, uh, which will pull together the key points and the research uh, and the technologies at hand here. Uh, so Object Rocket, a little background. We provide data services to customers. Um, our product offering includes uh, a platform which, which has MongoDB Redis and Elastic. We also provide a managed Hadoop solution, um, which includes an analytics partnership with, with Arcadia, just FYI, uh, to kind of round it out. This is an excellent counterpart to these large-scale database solutions, as um, these provide value to the platform through consistency and services. OK, um, good afternoon, everyone. So the Barcelona Supercomputing is uh, the National Spanish su Supercomputing Center. It will be analogous to what uh, Oak Ridge or San Diego Supercomputing uh, Centers are here in uh, Spain, uh, in the US. Um, th at the end of this month, we're re uh, releasing our new supercomputer called Mare Nostrum 4. Um, that's the sketch of the new design. We're not allowed to show pictures yet of uh, the, fi the final version. Um, but besides our supercomputing facilities, uh, the center is very active in the Hadoop ecosystem. We have several papers uh, on uh, scheduling, using accelerators for big data and, and HPC type of hardware. Um, and over the last couple of years, we have developed a benchmarking platform called Aloja, uh, in which we, we will uh, do the, the experimentation. The target in this Aloja uh, framework is to try to, the, uh, to increase the cost efficiency in big data. So process more data for less amount of, of money. And what we target here is to uh, do optimization. So try to optimize the software configuration. As you might know, in HBase, Hadoop, uh, all of the ecosystem, there are hundreds of configuration parameters. And on top of that, you also have to configure your hardware appropriately to get the, the most out, out of uh, your investment. And over the years, we have built a benchmarking platform. Um, it's a set of scripts. They're open source. And what they do is you define how your cluster is configured. And the scripts will deploy, for example, to the cloud or set it up on your on-prem cluster. Uh, they will install the Apache uh, Hadoop uh, ecosystem that it is, uh, Spark, HBase in this case. We'll, run the, uh, we'll set up the configurations you have decided, and we'll start running the, uh, the benchmarks that you have scripted. Uh, for example, what configurations you want to test, uh, the different uh, scenarios, how much data, et cetera. Um, when the benchmarks are running, we collect all of the performance metrics, logs, and we aggregate that. Um, and when we run these tests uh, internally, we put them afterwards online in, the, in a repository so everyone can access the data, the logs, uh, and reproduce uh, most of the results here. And on top of these uh, terabytes of uh, performance metrics that we've been gathering, we have built some analytical tools, uh, for example, to do predictions. What would happen if, for this cluster, I would add one more node, or I change this SSD drive with an NVMe device, so you can do some estimations of what would be the performance uh, and, and to the cost ratio. Um, we have participation from the industry. 
Uh, some of them use the results from the project, some others um, they uh, actually uh, try to parse these uh, terabytes of uh, performance metrics to improve uh, uh, data center uh, uh, cost and efficiency. And, um, okay. Sure. Uh, so, so going on to uh, motivation and objectives here. In, so in recent time, we've seen ad, uh, advancements in hard drive technology and uh, big data solutions are working to consume these inherent uh, performance benefits. NVMe technology continues to advance, as do innovations in big data. Uh, one, one interesting thing here, initially when you run uh, TerraSort using this set of drive configurations, you see minimal improvement. Um, and, and as here, you can see lower is better, uh, and that NVMe barely outperforms the SATA JBOT array. <clears throat> In theory, though, NVMe drives will be faster for reading uh, than for writing, and uh, additionally, ultimately, further work is to be done to measure performance improvements in tiered storage Hadoop as well as other file systems that are out there in the ecosystem. Uh, so NVMe specifically here, the industry is standardized on NVMe as the technology for communicating to SDSD, SSD through PCIe bus, uh, much like you know, Blu-ray standardized for high def optical disks. Um, and PCIe has become the alternative to the bus uh, for SATA and SSD as serving large workloads, you quickly run out of uh, bandwidth to those drives. Um, also, this reduces power consumption uh, as well as its cheaper cost per, uh, you know, for, for then uh, DRAM, although slightly less efficient. Um, so the, some of the cluster specs, uh, so there was, there was a cluster we used, which is very typical of a Hadoop deployment for rack space, uh, object rocket type. Um, this is a ProLiant, ProLiant servers running Sense 7, 128 gig RAM, 10 gig network, single octo core uh, CPU. The data nodes also consist of a JBOT array, SAS SATA style disks, uh, which we'll also include in the, in the metrics here for, for measurements. Uh, so the actual drives in this configuration we have uh, inside of the POC cluster itself we have Intel provided uh, DC3608 disks, as well as I mentioned the, the JBOT array. Um, additionally, we were able to perform tests on LSI Nitro drives, which are part of the Rackspace on metal solution. Um, and then HGSD provided uh, some UltraStar drives to also have further comparisons. And this is interesting because allows us to test across vendors as well as across uh, generations in the technology, as you see. Uh, so on to the FIO benchmarks. Yes, uh, so FIO is uh, pretty much a de facto standard for uh, drive uh, or disk uh, benchmarking. It's used uh, across the industry. Most of the vendors, when you see the IOPS or the bandwidth uh, that a disk can achieve when you're going to buy it, uh, most of the tests are done with using this benchmark. And what we want to do here is, uh, so we, we got these brand new cars, NVMe uh, devices, they're expensive. Um, we want to make sure that they are set up to their, to their maximum capacity so that we, we're achieving actually the, the best performance. So this means updating the firmware. For example, we had to update the firmware of the cars that we got. Uh, you need to make sure that the kernel is on the latest versions. If you're not on the latest versions, the car will work, but you, will, you won't get the, the maximum throughput. There are some backports on different um, platforms, so you, you need to make sure that uh, you're there. So uh, and we also wanted to verify the vendor expects. Are, are, are we really getting the, the IOPS that they're reporting or not? So here, initially, we have the three MVME cards, and we're going to be looking at a bandwidth that we get for, uh, from them. So f this first chart, uh, it is separated in three groups, the boxes. So we first have the Intel uh, drives, then the LSI Nitro, and then the HDSD UltraStar. Uh, here is uh, higher is better. This is bandwidth in, 
uh, megabytes per second or gigabytes per second. Not to be confused with uh, network speeds, which are in bits. These are uh, disks, these are in bytes. Um, and each of the colors here are uh, a different benchmark. So we have uh, four benchmarks, two sequential uh, that, that are read and write sequentially, and also random read and, and random write. So um, the blue one, the first one is sequential read, and then uh, random read, uh, write, and random write. One of the first things we can notice is that um, in each of the devices, the, the read and the random read, it's pretty much the same. We're achieving uh, the same performance in each. Uh, this is uh, good news. Uh, another thing that we can see is that uh, this is not the same for writes. In writes, we have uh, um, on random write, the performance uh, lowers a bit. Um, depending on the settings that you put in, in FIO, you might get a similar random write. But here we're, trying, we're testing uh, the highest uh, concurrency that, uh, um, that, that we set up in our tool. Um, another thing that is remarkable here is that uh, the newer the drive is, uh, the faster it is. So here the faster is the HGST, which is from last year. Uh, then the Intel one, which is uh, from 2015, and uh, the LSI Nitro, which is slightly lower, it's from uh, 2012. So uh, every time uh, there's a new device coming out, pretty much it gets a uh, higher performance. So now we're going to compare it with the JBot. Actually, we couldn't run uh, the JBot at this level of concurrency that we're testing the NVMe drives here, so we lower the number of jobs from 266 to uh, 32. Uh, so here's the uh, same benchmark, it, it's bandwidth again, but the last group of bars is the JBot. Um, one of the things we can see here is actually that this JBot with 10 disks, which are SAS uh, 15K RPM, um, are performing quite well. They achieve over 6.5 uh, uh, gigabytes of, uh, of total bandwidth, which is actually higher than the NVMe cards that we were uh, um, testing. So um, this answers uh, one of our first uh, approaches to the card on why we were getting very similar results using just the JBot or using just the NVMe cards for doing some, for example, Terrasor uh, type of benchmarks. Um, another thing that we can see is that the, the, the write speeds for, uh, for the JBot are quite similar to the NVMe devices, except for the HGST Ultrastar, which actually has uh, almost twice the write and random write speed. Um, last, we're going to look at IOPS. This is bandwidth. Uh, IOPS is the number of operations we can do in uh, uh, per second. And um, to measure IOPS, what you do is you, you lower the request size. Usually vendors use uh, a small request size, for example, in this case is 4K, to measure how many of these uh, small requests you can achieve uh, per second. Um, again, the HGST got the best numbers. Uh, it's close to 1.5 million IOPS, uh, which is quite uh, fast. And what's interesting is that they, they can achieve uh, similar number of IOPS for the uh, random write. And here is where the JBot is not performing uh, that well uh, on the high IOPS, uh, except for the sequential write, uh, the numbers are lower than on the rest of the devices. So now we're going to turn into the H page use case. Um, okay, so onto this, uh, we're ready to look at an application. In this case, it's going to be HBase. Uh, application HBase is uh, it's a big data NoSQL solution. Um, it's based on Google Bigtable uh, and utilizes HDFS for a storage layer, of course. Uh, and here in this diagram, we visualize the read and write paths of the JVM in an HBase deployment. We are, we're most interested here in the block cache L2 memory uh, read path in this use case where it pertains to bucket cache uh, as an off heap storage layer. Uh, memstore LRU, least recently used uh, for L1 storing blocks and then writing H files to disk. Um, and wall, uh, the write ahead log, which you know, writes straight 
to, to disk puts and deletes. So uh, one side note, and, uh, another potential way to speed up HBase is to configure wall writes to go to an SSD array. Uh, we don't have research on that here, but just an interesting note. Um, so this is, as I said, you know, pertains to bucket cache uh, and is used in L2 memory storage which can be off heap and is off heap in, in this diagram here uh, and is on storage disk. It has uh, three modes of configuration. As I mentioned, on heap, off heap, and file, which can live anywhere on any device. And uh, as, a, as an additional note, this is new to HBase2 uh, and resolves this JIRA, which has been outstanding for a while, which describes a method of improving bucket cache by improving reads through uh, the read through path to off heap storage in the sense that it currently, it would copy that block into memory and then operate on it, extract the, the byte array, uh, and then it would cause extra work and causes extra garbage collection. So that's an improvement um, and I know there had been some work to backport that into HBase1. There's some links here for reference uh, in the notes that'll be, be provided later. So, uh, so these are the specifics of the testing scenario. YCSB is used uh, here, and you know it's a standard NoSQL benchmark created by Yahoo. Uh, the tests will produce results for baseline configurations with bucket cache off heap RAM disk, uh, and lastly with the NVMe disk. Uh, the two main experiments, one with workload C, which emulates the read-only type workload, and lastly, the remaining of the, the YCSB suite. So, so here we go on that. Okay, so uh, our first experiment, uh, we're using the bucket cache, it's a cache system, so we're uh, just testing uh, reads, so gets from HBase. Uh, so we, in this case, in, uh, we're creating um, um, a, a workload of two terabytes for the cluster for, for this experiment. Okay, first here, uh, what we're looking at is uh, the four strategies. We have the baseline, which is without the bucket cache, a bucket cache off heap. In this case, uh, it's controlled by Java, but it's not on the same region uh, server process. It's, it's, it's another process. Um, then we're configuring it to a RAM disk. A RAM disk, it's a tempfs. It's a file system that you can mount with your uh, additional RAM. And uh, the third is bucket cache. Here, higher is better. We're measuring operations per second, so how many gets we can do per second. Um, we have three bars per group. The blue one is the first iteration where we don't have uh, the cache started. Uh, so we're, we're starting from scratch the cache. So it's a cold cache. And it's uh, usually the slower in uh, the slowest in each of the groups. So the cache is generating. But the second and third iteration, the next two bars, are uh, roughly the same in, the, in, in all of the experiments. So this means that the cache is being filled in in the first uh, of the runs, and that once we have all, the, all of the cache filled in, uh, the executions are faster. Okay, so what you might be thinking, why is uh, MVME faster than RAM? Uh, RAM, DRAM is faster than MVMEs, but um, on each node, we have a, a total of 128 GBs of RAM, and we're assigning to them 32 GBs. Uh, of course, you need to share the RAM with the OS, with uh, HBase itself, and you cannot use everything for caching. Uh, as in the bucket cache is using the 128 GBs of RAM plus um, 250 GBs uh, for caching that we had set up. And the, that's why it can achieve a higher number of operations because it, it can fit actually more data in, into its memory and uh, leaves more uh, memory to the operating system. So how much faster it is? The, both of the RAM, uh, the off heap and the tempfs uh, pretty much gave the same results. They are about 60% uh, faster than the baseline. And with the bucket cache, uh, we get up to 2.3x. So a, a little bit more than twice uh, uh, as fast as, as the baseline. 
Here I have the numbers in the slides. Um, so now let's now look at what happens in the, in the servers, in the, these are system metrics. So first one here, this is a CPU uh, utilization chart from 0% to 100%, uh, and the x-axis is time. And we have uh, um, the three runs, the first run with the cold cache, second and third. And one thing we can see that the second run and the third run are exactly the same. Well, on the first one, there's uh, this uh, red part here at the beginning. Red will be wait I.O., so uh, outstanding uh, I.O. requests on the CPU. Uh, the blue is uh, CPU in system mode. Uh, uh, green is uh, in, uh, blue is user mode, system mode, and actually this pink part is caused uh, by the network. Um, so what's happening here? So we have here a memory usage chart. Um, this is average for the whole cluster. Blue here is uh, committed memory and the green is uh, buffer cache. And on this chart we have uh, the reads from disk. And what is actually happening on the baseline is that the first seconds of the, the run, things are being read from disk, they are being put into memory, and then the rest of the benchmarks just run directly from memory. Uh, so actually, we're just stressing the disk in the first time, uh, the first part of the benchmark. Um, just for completeness, I'm, I'm adding the, the network throughput. We get uh, uh, three gigabits uh, of network throughput on, on the baseline. The network is never the bottleneck in the test that we, we have done. We have uh, 10 gigabit cards on, on each node. Um, so next, let's look at the different strategies of bucket cache, how it looks on the disk how it's different from this one. Um, so first, here on top, we have the off-heap bucket cache. Um, the reads here are on, on the negative y, y axis. This is the orange color. And what is happening is reading um, from disk, but actually it, it goes all over to the, to the end of the first execution, while the second execution, there's nothing being read from disk. On the tempfs disk, uh, everything is read on the first part of, of the execution. It would seem that it's more efficient in uh, capacity-wise using a tempfs than uh, using off-heap model. Uh, both of them take similar time. Um, one other thing is that uh, the reads from mem uh, the, the reads and writes from memory uh, are not displayed here on these uh, block devices uh, metric collectors. And here below we have the NVMe drive where we can see the reads and the writes how the bucket cache is being filled uh, on the first iteration of, of the run. Um, I will leave some notes here on the slides on, on the comments. And um, so what, what's happening here? Uh, one of the effects we're having is that the OS buffer cache is getting in our way to measure the, the disk performance correctly. So um, we thought of three strategies, either to increase the workload from two terabytes to, I don't know, 10 terabytes maybe, but uh, this would mean that each iteration that we do would take uh, about a week to run, which is, uh, we did some testing, but uh, it's not so efficient. Another uh, alternative would be to, uh, to limit the available RAM in each node. So what we're doing on the next set of experiments is actually uh, from 128, we're artificially limiting to 32 GBs of RAM and see what happens. Another will be to clear the buffer cache periodically. We have done that experiment and, and it will be, um, available online also. But it's very similar to limiting the, the RAM. So here we have the same experiment as before, but uh, with a, a max of 32 GBs of RAM. And what happens here is that the uh, um, off-heap and tempfs, uh, of course, they have um, less RAM to, to work with, and they pretty much give uh, the same results as the baseline. Actually, the off-heap uh, had worse results than the baseline because uh, there was resource consumption on the on the RAM. While in the case of the uh, NVMe drives, we got up to 8x uh, performance increase. Of course, this test is a slower than the first test, but here uh, we're measuring, um, we're trying to see what would happen if the system had uh, more load or less resources available. And in this case, the cache uh, is more effective. So let's look at how it looks on the CPU, uh, these four uh, alternatives here. So here we have the baseline, off-heap, uh, RAM disk, and, and the NVMe. Uh, this is CPU utilization, and the red part is IO weight. So 
we see a, do a lot of red, and this means that uh, we're really stressing the IO subsystem now uh, by limiting the amount of RAM. This is what we wanted to see. Um, so the first three take uh, similar times. They look quite similar, while on the NVMe case, we see more uh, CPU in user mode than uh, in system mode. Well, there's still a lot of red from the from reading data from, from the disks. Um, here on the TempFS, actually, there's like a dip here uh, where the arrow is. There, there was a failure. And what happened is that uh, the kernel, when it needs more memory, it actually uh, takes the memory away from TempFS. You cannot do anything about that to prevent it. That's the way it works. So actually here, TempFS failed, uh, but HBase is able to recover silently and uh, pretty much it's the same execution as, as the baseline. So pretty much with this limited amount of RAM, using uh, more RAM for, for catching was not uh, effective. Um, just to give you uh, um, a summary on the read throughput, for the NVMe case, we get close to 40 GBs uh, of uh, total aggregated throughput for the cluster, while on the other strategies, we're around 2.5 uh, gigabytes uh, aggregated bandwidth for the full cluster. Okay, um, next we wanted to test all of the different uh, workloads in YCSV, not only reads and writes. Um, so we haven't introduced formally YCSV, but YCSV is a no, a de facto NoSQL benchmark introduced by Yahoo. It has different workloads, A, B, A to F, and for example, A does 50 reads, 50% writes, uh, workload C was read only, read only, Workload F, uh, it does updates. There are some deletes around there. And so we run the same set of experiments here only presenting for 32 GBs of RAM. And uh, baseline, a uh, bucket cache uh, with, uh, on the TempFS and on the NVMe. Um, here, each of the colors is a different workload in, uh, in uh, YCSV. Not surprisingly, the yellow here, which is the uh, read-only, uh, gets the, the, the most uh, improvement, up to around 90% improvement for the, the speed up for the full uh, uh, workload. While on the TempFS, we get some speed up on some of these uh, workloads compared to this, uh, but it's around 20% the speed up that we get uh, using uh, the extra catching layer. Um, another thing here is that the, in the full test, we're not running repeatedly the test, so the, the cache is called on the first uh, on the first one. And the reason for this is uh, some of these uh, workloads actually alter the data, so they do updates, deletes, and more inserts. And if you start running the same workload again and again, you get different results than the previous ones. And so the full workload, we could only run it sequentially from start to end and, and measure these uh, properties. But what we're seeing here is that we're not getting a very high uh, speed up improvement for a more realistic workload. We're around 90% uh, for the NVMe uh, use case, even limiting the RAM to a, a high uh, um, concurrency setup. Um, so this is the CPU charts for baseline and for the NVMe use case. I'm going to leave the, the charts in for references in, in the slides and also the, this throughput. Overall, with the NVMe drives, we get uh, 25 gigabytes uh, aggregated bandwidth reading from disks, while on the baseline, we're, around, we're below 2 gigabytes for the full benchmark. So we're actually getting a very good bandwidth from the disks. Uh, but uh, not everything is read-only, so on the right part, we're actually not improving that much. Um, there will be a talk on this uh, summit uh, on Thursday about HBase 2, and actually they, introduce some, they will introduce some features for uh, optimizing the write path uh, using the, a similar strategy to the bucket cache. So we expect that this will improve uh, uh, with the next uh, big release. Okay. I think we can summarize here the findings. Sure. Yeah, great. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of key points just to just to bring to light. Of course, uh, good improvements from the workload C warmed cache, showing 3x speed up, uh, and a significant improvement uh, on latency with cache results. 
Um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add here, but we have uh, some advances in the hardware. I wanted to point out NVMe technology is still developing. Uh, we've seen improvements in every iteration of the technology, as, as we noted here. Uh, Intel specifically um, provides NT NVMe solutions introduced to their 3D crosspoint technology, which offers potentially much greater results. Uh, and here's some, some references on the slide for, for later, too, of course. And um, to conclude, interesting to note, SATA JBOT array still performs well on the sequential read writes and is cheaper cost per terabyte, so keeping that in mind in your configurations. Um, it is still necessary to provide specialized configurations and file systems tools to utilize newer hardware technology. Uh, so there's still a little bit of a technology gap. Let's see here. Uh, this is a, a more thorough reference sheet. This includes a lot of things um, that you might find interesting if you want to dig more into these. These, uh, these slides should be somewhere uh, on the site eventually. And uh, that's about it. We have also some, some FIO commands here that'll be, be, be available. Okay, but uh, any questions? We can, we can provide questions and answers here at this point. So the, the question was if we measured the IOPS on each server within these? Um, so it depends if you're talking about uh, the IOPS on the disk level or on the HBase level. So um, on YCSB, the results of, for YCSB is a get operation. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's throughput. So then all of the numbers here are throughput. But um, we're not directly measuring uh, disk IOPS as, as in the test before. I guess we could derive it from uh, request sizes and, uh, and uh, the amount of data read but uh, we haven't calculated that specifically. Yes? Have you looked at gets versus scans? So the question is, uh, have we looked at gets versus scans? Um, so there's a, a scan workload in YCSV, which is workload E. Uh, we actually did not run a workload E. This is the one here in red. Um, because actually, it, this only workload took uh, longer than the rest of the set to, to run. Um, the performance was not good, but this is not a problem with the NVMe drives. It's actually more on uh, how this benchmark works with HBase. HBase is not good at, at scans. So the question was, which YCSB driver are we using for these experiments? So YCSB ships three different HBase drivers, right? There's an HBase V3.1, one H base one two. Uh, do you guys, which version of the YCSB HBase? Yeah, the, the one two. One two, okay. Yes. Uh, do you think it might perform better with the async? Um, no, it, it's not, actually. Workload E fails with it. So workload E fails with? Yeah. yeah, we did some testing at the beginning. Uh, it was a colleague of mine, the one that, that did that, but uh, it's one to the one we're using, and it was the latest on, on the GitHub when, when we did the test. Oh, yeah. Have you like, uh, turned on the compression? Is that or is it uh, without the compression? <coughs> how, how do you set up the compression? Uh, we, we don't modify the compression. It's, it's as default. It's off. Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Uh, yes, yeah, so the question is if we got uh, network contention yes. because of all the disk read. Retrieving 40 gigabytes per second from your disk. Your network is only 10 gigabits per second. Yes, but uh, this is what we're reading from the disk, but the region server is processing this data. So not, not everything is going uh, yeah. over the network. We didn't really, there wasn't much network shuffle going on here. A lot of things were read straight into memory from the. 
directly so, from the region server. So on the MVME use case uh, where we limited uh, the RAM um, and we got the maximum performance, the network throughput aggregated in all of the cluster was six gigabits. Uh, so it was way below the capacity of one, one node. Okay. Uh, if you have some more questions, you can write us and uh, we'll be happy to follow up. We're going to repeat this test when there's a stable version in uh, HBase2. Um, th there, there's a lot of promise on, on more optimizations uh, on this level. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.